Hey, Foot Clan. What's up? We're, we, we have a great show for you. It, it's coming momentarily. Stand by. But first, we want to remind you about the ultimate draft kit because the NFL draft is almost here. And that means if you have pre-ordered the ultimate draft kit, Mike, you get those dynasty and rookie rankings early. Oh, I, I know I get them because I'm making them. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You get access, Mike, Jason, earlier than I get your Foot rankings. Clan. You get my rankings. But we're very excited about this. A lot of upgrades coming to the Ultimate Draft Kit this year. And like I said, you get in now, you get some pre-order bonuses, and you get a chance at those Dynasty and Rookie rankings. Oh, a whole lot earlier than those league mates of yours. So check it out at ultimatedraftkit.com. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your host, Andy Holloway. Jason Moore and Mike Wright. Ah, welcome in the fantasy footballers. Excited to be with you once again Thursday, April sixteenth. Mike and Jason joining me. I'm Andy Holloway. What's going on, everybody? Al I Borland, am... Judge Giamatti standing by. <laughs> Enough of you, Jason. <laughs> I am freaking out excited for next week. This coming week is going to be incredible. We have big announcements. The NFL draft is happening, and I am like full full into rookies right now. Can't I cannot wait. I'm I'm so footballed up right now. I just want you two to know how your football I up? am. Oh, I'm too hot. Sitting f- in your high rise. That's right. That's right. I'm up on the penthouse. Quarantined um, and watching film. That's right. Yeah. Mike, how are you doing? Any any breaking news from quarantine land? Uh, we're, we're doing all right. We're doing all right over here. The breaking news would be I had eggs and uh, potatoes for lunch. Oh, that's the breaking news. Oh, that's yeah. the world we live in, man. Breaking news. Let's check there on were... Jason's Denty Moore soup count. Oh, yes. That's a great point. How many cans of Denty Moore soup have you consumed? Uh, first of all, I know I'm Mr. Canned Food, but they aren't cans. They are packages. You just peel and microwave. It's fantastic. Um, huh. I've, Wait, I, what? Yeah. Oh, I have to they've look upgraded. this up. You, got, you've got, you can come over and pick up. You know, I'll leave them on the porch. You can come get 20 or 30. I've, I've got plenty to spare. We, uh, but they, they are delicious. I'm, I'm down three. I've I've eaten three of them. I we've been buying our groceries online, which means that there are a lot of those situations where you get the replacement, you know, where someone yep. is shopping for you and they say, "Would you prefer this or that?" We did one of those, and then uh, we got the milk, and the milk came a carton without the twist off. It was like an old fashioned, you know, oh. the like bend and open milk cartons it's called the bend and smush. <laughs> what like the a, bend like smush. a school lunch? Yeah, yes. like a school lunch top. So. The milk they we still got, make that? I didn't know that either. It shocked me. I was like, it was just very strange. The other problem with online food ordering is produce. If you ask for bananas or avocados or whatever, you're getting the you're getting the worst ones. The people that pick that stuff you're out the of like, Uggos? you're getting the ones where it's like, well, leave the good ones for the customers who walk in and know what they're getting. Yeah, and what are you going to do? I mean, speaking complain? of eating, Jason, uh, the Jason eats. Follow up video. We're all very, very excited for that thing to drop this Friday. How is the filming going? Has it happened? It is about to happen as soon as we finish recording this. Very I'm, nice. I'm not looking forward to it. All right, well, are you hungry right now? Is that that might change your actually, opinion of the dish? I am actually starving at all times. So yes, I'm. You're hungry. always you're always ready. That's my to secret. film. Always ready to go. I'm always yes. hungry. You can uh, see. All of our episodes, including the very special once a week Jason Eats episodes, youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers, jam packed show, diving into quarterbacks. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see uh, I am getting very political on the show oh. today. Guys, don't don't hold me back. Don't stop me. Uh, I support I, this platform. Do you? Okay. Because yes. I am going Murray Hopkins 2020 for president. Mm. Oh, I Fantastic. thought you were calling for a co-MVPs of the NFL. That is acceptable, Mike. Or uh, one Super Bowl MVP, one regular MVP. 
I think you'd go president, vice president, Super Bowl MVP, regular MVP. All of these things work for me. <laughs> but uh, no, very excited to get into it on this show. Talk about Kyler. Talk about some of the quarterbacks, even further down on our consensus rankings, the, the kinds of value quarterbacks that we end up with in most of our leagues that can help, you know, deliver top tier, you know, numbers, but not with that top tier price tag. Right. And then uh, you can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers, Instagram.com slash fantasy footballers. Quick question ties into the draft. Jason, you said you're very excited. Stoked. He's he's footballed up. He's footballed up. What are you most looking forward to? For me, it was just new stories, the rookie rankings and dynasty rankings. The fact that we can dig in, the fact that you can kind of wrap your head around a roster for these teams. Why is it no longer that? Yeah, you did Sorry. say it was. You you were very emphatic on the past tense there. You said for me it was. It, it was. was all of that. But now it's my political platform, Murray. Oh, okay. ah, all right. There we all go. right. Uh, for uh. me, I'm looking forward to the supreme technical difficulties. If this thing goes off without a bang, I and the world will be so not surprised, disappointed. I want <laughs> the problems so bad. I want them to go to a camera and have you know Gettleman. Knock his binder over. We've all seen the photo of Gettleman on his, <laughs> uh, with his little little itty bitty laptop with the binder that could that could be used as a murder weapon. Mounds of paper everywhere on that desk. That's gonna make it quick action. Uh, there will, will be s- jokes. There will be lots and lots of jokes based on watching each and every room, and you know the memes that are coming out of this thing. It's oh, going to be yes. great. But for They'll me, be the, ridiculous. The, the actual football thing I am looking forward to, I want to see how high Jonathan Taylor goes because I think he's a supremely talented back, the best back in this class, but it doesn't seem like he has the buzz or the team needs at a high position. You know, we talk about the other, you know, backs that have gone in the top 10, whether it's Leonard Fournette or Christian McCaffrey or Zeke or these guys, it just doesn't seem like that can happen for any running back, but you know, especially for Jonathan Taylor. So that to me is the one thing I'm watching for. Is he going to go in the first round? Because he needs that draft capital, that team to invest because he can carry that massive workload. And I hope a team is, is investing, you know, in telling us with their actions, we're going to give it to him. I, we have draft related shows and draft reaction shows coming up pretty much all next week. Mike, what what are you most looking forward to? So I am most looking forward to our big announcement that is happening next week and the follow-up to said announcement. That's what I'm really looking forward to. It's going to be very, very special. But to to not just leave people with the tease of what's going to happen next week, sort of like Jason, he he, he wants to see how high uh, Jonathan Taylor Thomas goes. I want to (laughs) see, does the NFL actually believe in this wide receiver class the way that fantasy and dynasty players have been touting them for what's it seems like 2020 wide receivers have been being touted for about eight years Mm -hmm. now in dynasty land so will four or five somehow end up in the first round or will it really just end up being Judy and CeeDee Lamb is the only first round wide receivers. It's interesting to me, the depth at the position and the fact that there are legitimately, you know, more than five players that could be star NFL wide receivers. Does that make it to where more are drafted in the first or fewer because push? Yeah, you go, well, look, it's such a deep class. I'm going to grab these positions that are more scarce in the first and I'm, I'll grab, you know, there's four guys I love, so I'll grab one of them in the second. You know, does does it end up actually having the opposite effect on draft capital, or does the run the run happen where we had a couple years ago where it it seemed like the the wide receivers were not going to go early, and then all of a sudden it was uh, it was Corey Davis. Uh, was that was that also the Mike Williams year? Corey Davis, Mike Williams, and John Ross, or stuff like they all just they just rattled off in those first few picks. Uh, I'm just. To follow up on your Jonathan Taylor comment, I'm now curious because based on you saying you're excited about that, that infers that Jonathan Taylor is your number one uh, before the draft where Swift is mine. Um, I saw Silva come out with his list this past week. Mike, who do you have at the top of your running back board pre-draft? Do you have Taylor? Yeah, Taylor's at the top. He's the guy I just – 
I like the most. I and it's a little uh it's a little bit different for me because I usually fall in love with those guys who have the massive production in the passing game. And but I believe that Taylor can be an absolute just beast of a man on the ground. And I think that his hands are solid enough that he could like like Leonard Fournette. We, we didn't no one envisioned Leonard Fournette as a pass catching superstar. And not that he was necessarily great with all the opportunities he had last year, but he still caught a whole bunch of passes. Like I think Jonathan Taylor can can do that, except be a far better running back overall than Fournette. All right, let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. All right, let's start here. A report this morning about Joe Mixon, quote, prepared for a holdout Uh if Mm. they can't reach a long-term deal. He is obviously vastly underpaid in the moment. I think he's on the books to make like a million dollars this year. Does this concern you right now, or are we just so far out that it's not of great uh, concern to you? Concerns me immediately. If you if you threaten a holdout, then there's a really good chance you you end up missing games. And so, yeah, I, I think this has an immediate effect. If you're doing best ball drafts, if you're doing um, you know some kind of startup draft now, I would certainly at, at the very least tie break um, with other guys in his tier that don't have the threat of non-injury missing games it's interesting the uh the Bengals do appear ready to work with him on a new contract the McCaffrey signing certainly you know I don't have any quotes from Mixon himself this is a report (laughs) out of the athletic but you have to imagine that that contract uh gets your brain going I believe that Mixon did a cartwheel when he (laughs) saw Christian McCaffrey's contract (laughs) Uh, he looked the, over. He said, "I'll have one of those." Yeah, and the Bengals did. The, I'll have the same, please. The yeah. Bengals did the uh, sit on the wall and slide down maneuver. I think they'll get a deal done. I'm not concerned yet, but obviously, when you hear the words "hold out" and what we faced in off seasons in recent years with certain players, uh, hopefully, uh, Joe has watched specifically like what happened to Melvin Gordon, where I, we don't have the numbers of what the Chargers were offering him. But I'm gonna put the probability at uh, uh, 90 plus percent that they were offering him more money than he got uh, from his new contract this year with his two-year deal. All right, speaking Tuesday, new Panthers coach Matt Rule, Jot ja- 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 Rule said he wanted to avoid having Christian McCaffrey on the field for every snap. This is not the first we've heard of that. Uh, we had reports early in this off season. People reached out uh, to me talking about the fact that they have been keying in on some of these available rookie running backs to try to reduce the load of Christian McCaffrey. And then, of course, they went out and paid him all the money in the world. I, I, My only opinion on McCaffrey is that he belongs at number one in fantasy football, but I can't imagine replicating the snap count and production of last year. That, that is not a an insult to Christian McCaffrey. It's simply he was on the field for every single snap. And, and, he, and he I believe the reports from multiple sources that they want to try to work somebody else in. It is the smart thing to do with a 60 plus million dollar investment, right? Yeah, it, it definitely is the smart thing to do. He doesn't need to be on the field every snap, even to finish as the number one running back in fantasy football. I mean, nobody else in the league is, on, is you know, at running back, all the other workhorse backs, you know, Zeke, he's not on the field anywhere near the same snaps that Christian McCaffrey is, you know, the, the Turner system believed that, you know, you, you show the same look and, uh, you know, that he had Christian out there no matter what the play was. And I think it's wise, give him a little bit of rest, give him a break. And, um, and I, and I do think they have to, you know, they, they just don't have anybody serviceable behind him. I think they need to kick the tires on this rookie draft class because, they have to have yeah, it's a running back position you know running backs go down you have to be prepared yeah you just didn't have options last year outside of McCaffrey either and then we have uh Peter King reporting the Jags are not expected to look at the quarterback position they want Gardner to be the guy you know I think we all expected that to be the case once Foles left town that they weren't going to replace him is that fair if, if I were them I would really want Gardner to be the guy because what's he have uh with three years left on that fifth or sixth round rookie deal, that, that's cashing in, man. Yeah, the rookie deal. I, from a mustache perspective, I'm a big fan. 
No, I'm yes, you, you guys are in the same club now. Yeah. Yeah, we're equally cool. Exactly the same. <laughs> you got mm-hmm. jorts on? I got nothing on. Oh, yeah. Oh, you are as cool. No way to know. No way to know. No way to know. Uh, any other news that you guys have seen? I know Jay Glazer's talking about breaking some news. Uh, by the time you're listening to this, he will have already done it. Oh but other other than that, is there anything else that... I, just, I had to look. Gardner Minshew will be paid $675,000 this year. <laughs> NFL franchise quarterback, to be a starting Gardner Minshew. Quarterback. I is mean, that what they slide over to Joe Mixon and when he's debating? <laughs> he's asking for more money. They go, oh, but look. The truth starting is... Starting quarterback, 625. The truth is, if Gardner is the guy, he's not going to finish out his rookie deal on that, but it's certainly possible that they make him play this and next year before they give him a big raise. Yeah, yeah, he's got to prove it. He's got to go out there and show that he's going to be a starter in the NFL. So we're going to talk quarterbacks here on out. Before we do that, I want to say thank you to Omaha Steaks for sponsoring today's Omaha. show and sponsoring my stomach. Mm, uh, yes. If you're staying home, which we all are, <laughs> there's never been a better time to order meat. That's what I'm saying. Just order tons of meat and then grill it over and over and over again. Uh, you guys know the story. Omaha Steaks, they deliver the world's best steaks and a huge variety of family favorites. Uh, my son, he cooked up them caramel apple tartlets oh, the other I, oh night. My. I was going to interrupt you and say, look, buy the meat. That's correct. But don't forget the caramel apple tartlets. I can't even so tell my kids about it. I got to hoard those things for just me. Those get Yeah, you get up freezer. real early in the morning, Mike, and you cook those oh, up and you eat them I can't all. believe Omaha didn't send us the, the apple tartlets again. <laughs> oh, they left them out of the package again. Yeah, I'm going to send them a note. There you go. They deliver quality and safety with every order. And if you're stocking up on the things you need, don't forget all of the different foods that you love. Oh, their burgers are so good. Right now, the Omaha Steaks limited time stock up sales available for our listeners to help your family stock up on the food you love. Go to omahasteaks.com and enter the code footballers into the search bar and unlock savings unique for our listeners. For the Foot Clan, there's a variety of ready to ship Stock up boxes available now. By entering the code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, you can save more than 50% on your order and get free shipping on orders of $69 or more. These packages are perfect for families, and they're ready to head straight for your door with free shipping. So visit omahasteaks.com, and remember, type FOOTBALLERS in the search bar to shop today. Foot Clan, we also want to thank Manscaped for sponsoring today's show. Long time, a personal favorite sponsor of mine. They are the only men's brand dedicated to below-the-waist grooming and hygiene, and their Perfect Package 3.0 kit comes with a new and improved Lawnmower 3.0 waterproof cordless body trimmer, a ton of other liquid formulations to round out your manscaping routine. They got they got anti-chafing deodorant, they got moisturizer, they've got everything it takes. The things that look you're you're out there and you're thinking, my, you know what? I'm fine. I. I, I I live my life like it's the 1950s. You're not fine. I, your your partner will tell you you are not fine. I am telling you you are not fine. I just manscaped myself nearly head to toe the other day, getting all that nasty body hair, getting it out of here because it's just it shouldn't be there. It should not be there at all. I don't need it to keep warm. Not in these times. Head over to manscaped.com. You're gonna get 20 percent off and free shipping with the code Footballers at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com and use code footballers. Manscaped is the best way when it comes to men's grooming. Get yourself the Joe Burrow of trimmers, the lawnmower 3.0. Oh, dear. <laughs> All right, let's get into the quarterbacks. Quarterbacks. I feel personally attacked for any body hair that I have right now. That's how I feel. After. Look. Take care I, of it. I, I'm not joking. I feel, I feel I, very insecure. I, I D-bodied hair, took a shower. I felt like mm-hmm. a million bucks yesterday. All right. Early quarterback rankings. We're going to go through as many as we can. Uh, excited to talk about these guys. I know we've been digging in, and there are a lot of questions out there that go beyond our consensus early April rankings, You know where we have these guys right now. There are questions about, you know, longevity and, and where you would put them in dynasty leagues, how you look at them from a long-term perspective. So we'll get into a lot of that. A reminder, a reminder we bring you each and every year. It might as well be a sponsored uh, segment by us. But the quarterback position 
it's tough at the top. I mean, nine out of the first 10 quarterbacks selected in last year's fantasy drafts finished lower than where they were drafted. And there's a lot of variables that come to quarterback play and predicting quarterback play year to year. And so when you are investing, remember, when you're investing at the quarterback position in fantasy, you are making a decision to go quarterback over another important position, a position you start multiple players in. So that is where you are kind of weighing the value of these these guys, right? And positions that are much more difficult to replace. You know, if you're midway through the year and your running back goes down, it's very difficult to replace that. If you're midway through the year and your quarterback goes down, I mean, we do a weekly streaming segment every single week where we're picking guys who are available on 50% of the waiver wire uh, for, you know, your average leagues. And, you know, we put those quarterbacks together weekly. And a couple of years ago, we tracked that. We ended up with our Frankenstein waiver wire quarterback as the quarterback six, as far as scoring goes. So, yeah, I mean, th this is one of those things where these early quarterbacks are great. Lamar Jackson, he was unbelievable, helped people win last year, but you drafted him late. Pat Mahomes, two years ago, when you drafted him late, and he was, he was awesome. When you spend the early capital, they're phenomenal. They will be a good quarterback, but it probably won't play the game right unless they are throwing 50 touchdowns like Pat Mahomes did two years ago. Yeah, yeah. It, it's just very difficult to get those kind of magical seasons over and over again. Our first two guys, you know who they're going to be, maybe not the order. Our consensus ranks have Patrick Mahomes at one, Lamar Jackson at two. Uh, that is what both of you guys have. I have it in reverse. I have Lamar and then Mahomes. But these are the two most formidable you know, fantasy options at the quarterback position. Mahomes dealt with the injury last year. We've talked about him a lot. Uh, he is part of a great offense. He has explosive weapons. Uh, uh, a drive can end in two passes from Patrick Mahomes and change your fantasy outcome on any given week. And then Lamar, you know the season he had. He was the difference maker. He was one of the most commonly owned players on any championship team. And a lot of that had to do with the fact you got him at a great value. Now you go into 2020 knowing the upside and potential of both these players. We're, we've been through it with both these players. They have won many a fantasy league for owners. So when you look at Mahomes and Lamar Jackson, I mean, I'm not exactly sure where you want to go here, but one question that always comes up is, where would you perceive them as a value, being somebody that looks for a late round quarterback? What round would you would you say? Okay, I, this is just too low for me to pass up. Uh, some of that's going to depend on obviously how the ADP of other players pairs out. Late in the third, I would be I would be a little I would be a little curious. I would I would you know, and, and it's getting a little higher. In the fourth round is probably the closest that I would actually pull the trigger on either guy. Um, but usually in those third and fourth rounds, there is a very solid running back or wide receiver. And I, obviously I've only got, you know, three other players. So I, I think the fifth, I would take them all without a doubt, and they will never be there in the fifth. So I, I don't expect to have Pat Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. Uh, Mahomes is my number one. Mike's number one. Andy, you're, you're number two. Can't complain about that. But Mahomes had relatively a down year this last year, but he was awesome. <laughs> he started the year phenomenal. Um, and then, you know, okay, in weeks four through six, he was disappointing because even though he was a quarterback one every single week, it was a lower end quarterback one. Then he got injured. So that game doesn't really count. He had a meh game against the New England Patriots, which everyone did. Their defense was unbelievable. Uh, Denver is when he got injured and the week 17 game, he was actually phenomenal all season. And, and I think, you know, if I have to bet a house payment on who finishes fantasy with more points this year, I, I'm going back to Pat Mahomes because Lamar Jackson's touchdown rate was just just too unsustainable. Mike, we, if if the Ravens added a significant top tier weapon at wide receiver in the NFL draft, would that sway things for you at all? The reason I went with Lamar at one is simply because I think when Lamar goes off, those games are pretty insane. I mean, last year sure. you saw it. You know, he finished first or second, I think six or seven times at the position. That's something that Mahomes only did one time through yeah, the it, course of the year. So there was a little bit more disappearing from Mahomes. It's splitting hairs, but is it the weapons for Lamar or just the 
special season that you expect to regress, or are we yeah, not even talk about it? It's it's regressing the special season. A, a touchdown rate of nine percent is it's just impossible. We we've seen time after time when a player has a a, a touchdown rate that's over about seven percent, the average drop is multiple points. It's it's a very very substantial drop. I, again, arguing Lamar Jackson at number two seems like a ridiculous thing to be doing, uh, but but that's the only reason I go with Mahomes is I don't I don't think Lamar can repeat the the passing touchdown volume. Lamar will go ahead of Mahomes. Yes, in all fantasy drafts, mostly. I, I can't. I I would you know dynasty might be different, a different story. But in a redraft, who do you league, got? Who would you rather have? I think I would take Mahomes. Yeah, I would take Mahomes. Is that injury risk with all the running for Lamar Jackson? Longevity of career, <laughs> even, even though one of them was hurt last year, and the other well, one. Well, there's an injury risk for every player, but how how often you put yourself out there is the only it's, way. It's, that you it's can. running. De- it's, it's the percentage of your fantasy output is dependent upon running. That would slightly sway it for me. Yeah, Pat Mahomes could be an unbelievably good fantasy asset when he's 38 years old. Lamar yeah. Jackson isn't going to be running like you know an rb1 at 38 that being said it w- that would be the wrong call for dynasty if lamar gave you seasons like this for the next five years right i will take five of those over you know ping-ponging you know touchdown numbers from Mahomes. and two years ago we saw this narrative play out you know the the unsustainable touchdown rate for patrick mahomes the regression down from that to still a great season dealing with the injuries there are a lot of variables that can happen for any quarterback after a special year at three and four, we have Kyler Murray and Deshaun Watson. And when I saw these guys at three and four, I thought to myself, well, that is near. There's no way that that would be the case if Hopkins was on the other quarterback's team. I think that that was the difference maker in, again, splitting hairs between a couple of great options. Jason and I have Kyler at three this year. Mike has him at five. Uh, Mike has Deshaun Watson still at number three and Jason and I have him at six. So I know Mike, you've talked to me about Watson and how you believe that he will be forced. He will be backed into uh, yes. the running totals that will, I, I assume you believe, uh, exceed 82 for 413 and seven from last year. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to, when we stack guys out, I just off the top of my head, I, it's hard to, for me to see Deshaun Watson not above the 600 yard mark. Like I, I think he will run a lot more. And Brandon Cooks, he's not DeAndre Hopkins, but Brandon Cooks has still been a production monster in the NFL. So even though it, the the tier of the quarterback or wide receiver has gone down, he's still surrounded by by players that can go off every single week with Cooks if Will Fuller somehow stayed healthy. Like he's surrounded by elite weapons, and then the just on top of that, having to run a bit more. It, I'm still very secure with Deshaun Watson being a, a that second tier of quarterback. And the and the D Johnson brothers at running back are you know a quarterback's best friend, so he can go deep to three different incredible speedsters, dump it down to David Johnson or Duke Johnson. Uh, be careful when accepting trades this year. <laughs> uh, in platforms of just be careful so D. on Johnson. your draft. Yes, seriously. Um, I, I, I like gonna, Johnson. On it's the gonna same. happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. It will. <laughs> yeah. Oh it, my gosh. As far as Kyler goes, um, Kyler's probably gonna cost too much for me to have in any league. He'll be drafted as a top five quarterback. There's a chance that Deshaun Watson maybe drops out of that. I mean, he's my quarterback six, so I don't expect him to necessarily be drafted super high but he he could end up being a value kyler finished as the quarterback seven last year in a rookie year where he only threw 20 touchdowns because you have that rushing baseline now he gets if you didn't have hopkins coming to this team you would be moving kyler murray up from seven based on him taking that leap in his year two he would probably be a top five guy but oh they added deandre hopkins so yeah, I mean, it, it's it's hard to argue against Kyler as the third quarterback off the board. I, I think Kyler will still run for more yards than Watson will. Um, that's he, you know that part of his game moves these guys way up the board. Obviously, yeah. Uh, last year, yeah. There's a theme. It's uh, running quarterbacks. <laughs> One thing that was strange with Watson last year, even with the weapons that he had, is that he did have those kind of 
down games, and then you knew the next game after would be great, but he did it like five times during the year. And I am a little bit concerned about the passing touchdown totals. I can get behind him being backed into running more often, but I don't know if that will equate to sustained drives for this offense on a regular basis. All those guys staying healthy, losing Hopkins around the goal line. That will be something interesting to watch for Deshaun Watson and whether uh, this team can kind of maintain its offensive prowess if David Johnson has something left in the tank. That'll be something to watch. And obviously, Kyler going into year two. At five and six, we have Dak Prescott and Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson. Uh-huh. Now, I thought there was a chance Mike would take Russ and, um, you know, just throw him down to like 20, 30, uh, maybe okay. below Will Greer. Uh, you would rank him down there. But your victory lap on Russell Wilson did not equate to a like a second tier number. I've never been so right and so wrong at the exact same time. <laughs> Yeah, your it's victory really lap was not a victory lap because you were. No, technic- I lost. I to lost refresh that bet. our yeah to refresh our listeners' memory, what was the exact bet that that Russ would be a top what top twelve? Yeah, I I went all in. I said he would not finish as a uh, QB one. Dang, that's a bad bet, Mike. That's just yeah. Bad. Top twelve is a bad bet. That's a bad bet by you. I you was were, I was you, being bold. You needed to bet in a way that. What happened last year gives you a win because you because what because happened last year was that. You, you were QB one seven times, <laughs> exactly, and he finished seven times as the QB four. That's not supposed to happen. No, in he fact, had monster games and disappearing acts. He was as hot and cold as any quarterback c- comes. And if you started Russell Wilson week in and week out, every you know the quarterback four. If you just started him every week, your team lost a lot of games. It's interesting because I do think Wilson is primed for a end of year statistical season at 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 the same level of last year, if not better. I mean, they added Greg Olson, Philip Dorsett, another year with DK Metcalf, and then Wilson just finds a way. He's the one player that kind of takes unsustainable touchdown rates and just makes them a habit. Yeah, and he the problem what what hurts me so much is that Russell Wilson should be a top three guy. It's like it it's not Russell Wilson who's holding himself back. It's the offense. It's the way that they choose to uh, – that Pete Carroll is approaching the NFL with the with the run-heavy offense. I, it's, I can't argue with the results. The, for the most part, the Seahawks have been extremely successful in the last, four, last few years. It just sucks to see a player of Russell Wilson's talent and ability to be – hamstrung by it, by the guys on in charge it's uh, by the way 30 plus passing touchdowns in four of the last five years for russell wilson that's insane this is where fantasy football kind of ruins the appreciation for ordinary nfl success right because they've been like you said they've been a great team they've been they've had better than better years than we expected them to do based on the rosters that they were putting out there over and over and over again, validating a system that doesn't lean on Russell the right. way that Kansas City leans on Patrick Mahomes. But we all just have that curiosity. We want to see what would Russell do if he was with Andy Reid or in a system right. that let him chuck it. He would dominate. That's what he <laughs> would do. Um, so back to Dak, uh, our number five quarterback. Um, I was surprised to see both of you guys have him up at number four. I've got him down at seven. Obviously, he finished quarterback two last year, an excellent season. The changes in the offense uh, with the new head coach, Mike McCarthy coming in, the fact that he threw for 596 passes last year. I, I don't I don't expect them to stay that pass ha- you know heavy. Um, however, they did retain the same offensive coordinator, and historically speaking, Mike McCarthy was always – yelled at for, you know, not running the ball more. So um, what are your guys' reasons for putting Dak up at four? I This is a respect thing for me. I mean, he, he just had a, a solid fantasy year where Amari Cooper disappeared at times, was injured at times, and the weapons, you know, Gallup coming into, you know, coming into his own at the position. I just think the weapons with what they're going to put on Dak – you know he belongs in that top five for me after the QB two finish. Mike, what were your reasons? Yeah, that's that's it. His his weapons are are fantastic. I kind of alluded to it during our wide receiver talk that I think 
that of the teams that have a chance to have two wide receivers in the top 20, I think that Dallas has some of the highest odds in the NFL. On top of that, Dak is a really, really good quarterback. I mean, he was one of the most accurate guys going down the field last year. They and they the the fact that Zeke is there, it just it helps. I mean, you teams can't decide; they can't sell out to stop one aspect of the Dallas offense. If you sell it to stop the run, Dak will crush you. If you sell it to to stop Dak, then Zeke will crush you. So, I think that that Dak. And Dak has has the rushing ability as well. His rushing touchdowns were actually down a little bit, but he is uh, those first few years he was like six rushing touchdowns every single year. That gives you a nice little bonus every once in a while. I think that he's he's very very safe and and he almost hit five thousand yards. Like, yeah, that's what impressed me. That's he outrageous. Didn't need to run. He didn't get the rushing touchdowns last year. Two seventy seven on the ground, three touchdowns, and it was all alleged, through the air. Allegedly dealing with a with a banged up Amari Cooper. I'll Look, use that the, narrative. I'll use the quotes, and and Michael Gallup missed a couple games as well. That narrative about the Amari Cooper—that's the thing that does excite me for the the you know the high end Dak. If you want to put him at number four or even at number three, because you look at the you know how he was the first eleven weeks of the season, he was unbelievable. From week twelve on, uh, for his six games, he wasn't even a top fifteen quarterback. Um, right. And those were the weeks where you know Amari was injured and struggling and i you know i some remember tough, yeah yeah some I, tough I rem- matchups new england in new england chicago in chicago yes tough matchups and a, you know i i i just want to remind us all do you remember the games where amari cooper was out there and he was just a decoy i mean he looked like he couldn't run he couldn't cut right. he just was a, a guy struggling to exist on the field and so you know there there is upside if both those guys stay healthy and Amari Cooper isn't just the 50 50 man but if he's actually the hundred million dollar man um then then Dak should finish great all right at seven Josh Allen eight Drew Brees Allen is kind of the inverse of Dak in terms of the rankings with Mike and I and Jason Jason has Josh Allen up at four the addition of Stefan Diggs uh, the Bills. I'm a big Bills fan this year. Josh Allen passed for 3,000 yards last year, 20 touchdowns. I'm fine getting behind him, taking a bit of a leap. Obviously, he's he can run the football. I have a hard time getting up to four, but I'd love to see it, Jay. I'd love to see it. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, he was the quarterback six this last season, and he was a little bit disappointing because he was consistent but never gave you those big blow-up games. But we saw from his rookie season that he can absolutely give big blow-up games. He had monster performances with his rushing in his, uh, the, the back half of that rookie season once he got back from injury. So if he finished at six, he's still maturing as you know a quarterback, and then you add Stephon Diggs to this lineup, I, I felt I had to move him. Uh, up, you know, this is a guy who had nine rushing touchdowns this last year. So the twenty pass, it's very Cam Newton esque, and Cam Newton was pretty much always a top six quarterback if he played the season. Usually a top three quarterback because you had so many rushing touchdowns that when you get down near the goal line, he is your most effective weapon at running the ball in. And so you know, if how would you feel if he had twenty nine passing touchdowns and all a those lot touch- better? I'm I'm saying he scored 29 touchdowns. They were just rushing, which is more valuable for fantasy. Um, The theme Mike was saying earlier of those top guys are all outside of Mahomes. They are all so good at running the ball because that's the cheat code in fantasy football where, you know, it's scored different when you have rushing yards versus passing yards. Uh, I think Josh Allen continues to dominate on the ground. That's why I've got him at number four. There, there is an argument to be. I mean, Stephon Diggs. I believe he was number two in the NFL in twenty plus yard catches outside. Uh, I think Galladay was number one. Diggs was number two. Allen is. That I know we repeats. talk about his efficiency problems, but his completion or his completion percentage problems. But in part, that's because he's willing to throw the ball up. And when Kirk Cousins threw the ball up. Diggs was generally open. So there is a world where you get more explosive plays from Allen this year. You should get more explosive plays from Allen this year the way that you saw them two years ago um, when you had some more of those deep passes. We didn't get a lot of those with, with John Brown. Yeah. Well, I mean, we had – there was still quite a, quite a few of them. He, Josh Allen was 
a far smarter quarterback this this year, which that's great. I mean, we, we need to see him progress and, and become a better player. The, the problem with me uh, buying into Josh Allen really being rush heavy is his rookie year at the end when when he really went off, it's because his number two or his top two targets in that offense were Zay Jones and Kelvin Benjamin. This year, the rushing clearly went down. I mean, it dropped from uh, from fifty two yards a game down to thirty one because he had capable weapons, and now they've added in possibly whatever. Stephon Diggs is a top ten wide receiver in the NFL. It takes away from Josh Allen's desire to run. Like he doesn't have to put the entire team on his back when they're trying to make a playoff push at the end of the year. He's got weapons, so I, Josh Allen will be fine. Uh, but I think it's it's a bit more of the same for him this year. Uh, Drew Brees at eight. Drew Brees had a incredible season, marred by injury, but in my opinion, one of the biggest winners of free agency. Emmanuel Sanders arrives in New Orleans. This is probably Drew Brees last year. I don't buy into the fact that Sean Payton had made it kind of a mistake. <laughs> and then when you Whoops. when you follow that up with signing an eventual contract with NBC, Drew Brees signing the contract right. saying, as soon as I do retire, I'm yours, which this is new. This reminds me of like a recruiting deal for like a, or a high school athlete going to a college. This might have to happen now with the success of Tony Romo. Player, players are going to start signing eventual contracts. Yeah. yeah, Tony Romo, I mean, he got himself paid, but he got a lot of other players paid too. Yeah, and so and and these quarterbacks are seeing that they can maybe make more money in their post career <laughs> than they can. I mean, Romo's making more money now than he ever did playing. That's but crazy. Breeze sitting at 8, that seems like the right place. We've got them all similarly ranked 8 8 7. Uh you certainly don't get mobility with Drew Breeze. You get efficiency with Drew Breeze. That's what he's going to give you. The weapons that he has, you know, they they don't drop the football. So Breeze is the most accurate quarterback in football, and then you've got two of the most, uh, you know, the best hands in football, or four of the best hands, I guess, between Sanders and Thomas. I, so. I was going to say handsiest, but I, I think that is oh. under. <laughs> yeah, they're just good at catching the football. Yeah, you don't want necessarily the handsiest. The weapons yeah. are, I think, the best. that Drew, Drew Breeze has had an extremely long Hall of Fame career. And this year, I think, are his best weapons he's ever had. When you have Michael Thomas at his peak, Emmanuel Sanders, who still was great last year, Jared Cook, and Alvin Kamara. I mean, Jared Cook, uh, you know, that's the reason that I think Drew Brees has success this year when it comes to the breakdown between passing touchdowns and rushing touchdowns. Uh, maybe it swings a little bit more towards the rushing um, and gets back to normal. But I still think with those weapons, he's just going to cut defenses apart, uh, even at his old age. Drew Brees was the quarterback three in points per game the from the game he returned from injury against Arizona. And that includes an absolute stinker against Atlanta in week 13. So, uh, yeah, he, Drew Brees at eight, it feels, it feels comfy, although I think that he certainly could finish a lot higher than eight. All right, Aaron Rodgers, our consensus quarterback nine. I don't even feel amazing about that. <sighs> Matt Ryan at 10. Rodgers last year, I did the math, guys. It was complex arithmetic. I was happy starting Aaron Rodgers 37% of the time last year. That is not what he built his, <laughs> his career on right. for fantasy owners. Having him at nine, I just don't know if I'm going to take Aaron Rodgers in any league. I think I'm going to be looking for more upside elsewhere. I agree. You 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 watched him last year. He didn't look the same. He he torched some terrible defenses. Uh you know, Philly early in the season was as bad as you get. Uh Oakland. Uh, Oakland and Kansas City early in the season, the first half of the season was they didn't get their defense turned around until late. Uh, he was top 3 against those guys. But outside of, you know, if he's not playing the Giants, he pretty much was really bad the majority of the season. We talk about uh, if you started week in and week out Russell Wilson, it's probably more often that people, because of the name, started week in and week out Aaron Rodgers, and he was not good, not good for the majority of the season outside of five good games. Yeah, with for Aaron Rodgers, my thought process is I'm not going to boldly proclaim that Aaron Rodgers doesn't have it anymore. 
he's just he will end up being a player that I'm willing to be wrong about. Like I won't draft him if if he goes off and he has another great fantasy quarterback season. I'm happy for him. I'm just I'm willing to be wrong and pass on him. I think he's going to drop down my rankings. I think when the draft happens and additional weapons are added elsewhere, Rodgers is going to end up lower in my list by the time the season starts. Matt Ryan, number 10. Last year was interesting. (laughs) Ended up still over 4,400 passing yards, 26 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Todd Gurley arrives, but Austin Hooper's out the door. They added a Hayden Hurst. They might add another weapon in the draft, but where are you with Matty Ice? He's just a solid quarterback. You know what I mean? Like He's not one of those guys you're excited for. You're not going to take him high for some crazy great finish. Um, now, Jason, you, you've you been firm on the ping pong narrative, and it, it came true if you're looking double just, digits. QB 7 in 2014, then QB 19. Highly then QB mathematical. Two, then QB 15, mm-hmm. then QB 2. Last year, QB 11. That means mm-hmm. this year, mm-hmm. he has to be the quarterback you, too, These right? trends continue. It, it, I think that that's how math works, and so you are correct. <laughs> um, it's it's going to be tough when you lose Austin Hooper um, to be much better, but you know he did miss uh, a game in there and was injured for another. Um, so I, you know, I, I think that this is uh, a better season. Uh, for fantasy uh, upcoming in 2020 than before, but I don't see him as a top flight option. I will almost certainly bypass him in my draft. I'm not excited about upside, about monster games, about weak winning performances. Um, he's just a solid back that at the end of the year will finish, you know, as probably a quarterback one, low end quarterback one, and that's not what I want. That's the first time I've heard a, a quarterback called a back before, but I guess it's accurate. I mean, yeah. I guess that's true. He's a Q-back. He's as much a back as a our back. <laughs> I think I would take, I mean, they're back-to-back in our rankings here. I think I would take Matt Ryan over Rodgers most of the most of the time here. Oh, man. If they that's, cost that's the same, painful. I would take Rodgers. But it yeah. is yeah. brutal. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, man. All right. 11 and 12. Carson Wentz at 11. Matthew Stafford at 12. Wentz just 10.4 yards per completion last year, the third worst in football. It is a fair story, narrative, whatever you want to call it, to say he had no one. I mean, that is true. He had a beat-up offensive line for a large period of the year, and he had no wide receivers for a large period of the year. Lost Ejax, lost Alshon for a little bit, still had to have Nelson Aguilar on the field. Those are three strikes, you know, three strikes against you. (laughs) Um, yeah, I mean, you saw it at the end of the season when, uh, Boston Scott became a primary Greg Ward. Yeah. Became a primary target. Um, so, you know, you now granted you say, okay, well, what's really changed? Hopefully D is healthy, but he's older and he always misses games. Alshon, hopefully he's healthy, but he's older and he always misses games. You know, it's like, are you going to have confidence in Wentz if they, draft you know a a a Jalen Rager as as a year one you know uh now Carson Wentz is going to be better I'll have confidence and I'll wince okay (laughs) that's what I like that's what I will do yeah yeah I like it (laughs) (laughs) uh Mike Staff I mean with Matthew Stafford I know that you are excited about his potential sitting here at 12 do we think that this is the value pick that has stood out from our list so far? So far, yes. Yeah, yeah, I would go that way. He was he only played 8 games, but in those 8 games he was a top 6 quarterback 50% of those 50% of the time. He's surrounded by two great wide receivers. Maybe we can get an entire season of carry on Johnson, maybe. I, I don't I don't really know. We fingers <laughs> fingers will be crossed. <laughs> but it I don't see any reason for Stafford to change the way that he was the the way that he was throwing it down the field. Like when he was active, he had the most Stafford passes. was great. He had the most passes of twenty plus air yards. Like he was getting after it like vintage Stafford. The back injury I mean, this is multiple years in a row now where we've had Stafford have an injury problem. So that is certainly a concern. 
But wasn't that the first time he missed any games? Are yeah, you just saying? Gonna, no, no, he was not dealing. the first time ever. When he, you don't remember him coming into he the league. He played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine consecutive sixteen game yes. seasons since twenty eleven. When he came, that's right. pretty good. Yeah, when he yes. came in the league, he had some injuries, was labeled as injury prone, then became the toughest guy out there. I think what Mike's referring to, he didn't miss any games the year prior. There were rumors but it, about the back. It came yeah. out in the off season yes. that he was playing injured with the back injury, which is what and you know then, he. And, his play him. fell apart too at the end of the year. Like it, yeah, it, last year when you saw great. what happened, it made sense. So it, I'm just saying it. It is a little bit of a concern. We do have we have him at 12. Very curious how fantasy players treat Matthew Stafford in the draft. Like he'll I be drafted to, as like quarterback 20. Yeah, that's what highest. I would think. But yeah, players not, like not positive. Tannehill, Brady, they'll go ahead of him. Uh, Tannehill's at 13 on our list. He had the best yards per completion in the NFL. I thought this was funny. I looked this up earlier. Tannehill had 22 touchdowns on 201 completions. That is a ridiculous hmm. touchdown rate per completion. Jared Goff was the inverse. He had 22 touchdowns on 392 completions. So Tannehill basically put up the same touchdown totals on half the completions as Jared Goff. That's, that's kind of stunning, is it not? Well, that's why people are all hot and bothered over A.J. Brown. Some of those, you know, uh, passes that, sure, it's a 20-yard pass. That's great. But now it goes for 60 and a touchdown. Thank you, A.J. Brown. And and the weapons are there. You've got to... You've got to play to stop the run against the Titans. I believe that Tannehill is good. He can also um, run the ball. Uh, he had four rushing touchdowns, and uh, he continued that in the playoffs. So I think he's a very good option. It just depends on ADP. Is he going to be, you know, when when he played, right, he didn't get to start until week seven. From that point on, he was the quarterback three. Does he get drafted with that kind of respect? Then I'm probably going to be out. I don't think he gets that respect, which means I'll be in on Tannehill because if you're trying to get a guy who can do the big blow-up games, the big performances, um, I, I think that, you know, Tannehill, Tannehill can do that. All right. Wentz at 11, Stafford at 12, Tannehill at 13, Tom Brady at 14. I want to remind listeners, seventh most passing yards last year in the NFL, fourth most pass attempts, fifth most 20-plus yard completions to the noodle-armed concerned. Uh, Baker at 15, not a good year last year, third worst completion no. percentage, sacked 40 times, 21 mm. interceptions, fourth worst turnover rate overall and football. looked like every single one of those stats you just said <laughs> you know what i mean like sometimes oh, the yeah. stats are yeah. misleading that was just like it doesn't matter if you're a film guy or a stat guy analytics it was all bad for for baker for the record he will not look that way again because the browns just introduced much better uh uniforms all right i you don't get your uniform bump uh big uniform bump the stripes are fire well, I'm uh, saying, like, I mean, if if you feel better about how you look, maybe he performs better. Yeah, more stripes, less turnovers. That's what they say. Daniel less, Jones, less commercials, more touchdowns. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel Jones at 16. That is Mike's fault. Yes. Big Ben at 17. Jared Goff at 18. Fault? You mean that he's that high? Correct. It is your. Uh, it is you're to blame for that high of a ranking for Daniel Jones. But it's okay. I don't mind it. It is ironic because he's at 16 and Andy and I both have him at 17. Oh, do we? Yeah. I, do. <laughs> yes. I don't have our individuals there. <laughs> How dare you move him up one spot? Yeah. I mean, when I when I look at Daniel Jones, the amount of kind of gunslinging he did last year, it had its ups and downs to it, but it's hard to look at him and look at Baker. And then if for some reason the Browns do lose Odell Beckham, I mean, how, how do you get excited about Baker Hooper Landry. I mean, this is going right. to be on a Stefanski led team. This yeah. will be the Nick Chubb Kareem Hunt show with Baker managing an offense. In that case, I would be going Jones over Mayfield. And, and you know, you can't just bank on draft capital to make Mayfield a great fantasy option. It doesn't work that way. Like Otherwise, Daniel, Sam Darnold would be here. Daniel Jones had 24 passing touchdowns. Baker was the one who set the rookie record a couple years ago. At 27, Daniel Jones essentially played 12 games. Like he, he certainly would have broken the record. And we, it, it's funny that we kept having these discussions of which, which one of the Giants' wide receivers, who's actually the number one wide receiver, who's the guy that you prefer. Well, Evan Engram might be the number one 
target for that offense. I mean, can he stay on the field? That remains to be seen. But we do know when Engram was out there, Daniel Jones was giving him a ton of targets, and, and Evan Engram is a is a game changing tight end. So if this is a full powered, healthy offense, I really like Daniel Jones' upside if he can stop fumbling the ball so much. He just needs to fumble it into like Saquon's arms, and that will be <laughs> fine. Big Ben at 17, Jared Goff at 18, Jimmy Garoppolo at 19, and Phillip Rivers at 20. When I saw those two names, I can promise you – now, my, I will take Phillip Rivers over Jimmy G for the upside. Yes. Jimmy Garoppolo last year, if you want – you know, the, the talks of Brady – to San Francisco, San Francisco fans don't want the, the the rental. But Jimmy G last year, lowest average depth of target in the NFL, 6.5 yards. Threw deep balls on 6.5% of passes, the lowest in the NFL. That it, You combine those two, and it's like Alex Smith's wet dream. I mean, that was just a not a game manager type of season from Jimmy Garoppolo. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, he's surrounded by weapons that excel, though, with that 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 type of work. I mean, the the man, the the man himself, Debo Samuel. When you give him the, you want him to be working in space and just getting the ball out of Jimmy Garoppolo's hands. Philip Rivers at twenty, Jason. You talked about him recently when we were talking about T.Y. Hilton being put in that system. Great offensive line. You need that for the immobile Philip Rivers. Uh, do they need another weapon though for him to move up from this twenty ranking? Do you need to give somebody, put somebody else on the outside other than T.Y. Hilton? Yeah, I don't. I don't think they have the core that is good enough. I wasn't a huge Paris Campbell believer, and while I think Jack Doyle will be fine for fantasy, I think he is uh, not who you want to basically be your number two option. Um, you know, if I'm in this range, the two guys that I like are Ben Roethlisberger and Jared Goff because both can explode, have big games. You know, those last five weeks. When uh, for golf, for golf, he yeah, was much, he was much pretty better. good, um, and that was with the system where you had Cup and uh, Cooks splitting time. So golf is a little bit intriguing to me because he'll be free. Nobody's drafting him, and then of course Big Ben was great for fantasy, but then got injured. Now people aren't going to want the older guy that they haven't seen post injury, so he will probably be free. And if he comes back to health, then you just are stealing a great fantasy option undrafted there are there are several completely undrafted quarterbacks this year uh, that at least have a pathway to being a, a a really great fantasy option yeah and uh is this the part of the show where i am able to get political again and stump for cd lamb to arizona so that way <laughs> yes just <laughs> i mean it's, of- it's murray hopkins but also cd lamb maybe and then fitzgerald and then kirk <laughs> and then isabella and no offensive line. Yeah, is that, uh, this is the part. Then trade uh, up sure. for Judy. You Aren't know? you willing to Just vote for that that platform? I'm in for fantasy. Sure, for fantasy. That's all I care about. Um, also, Super Bowl champion Arizona Cardinals on the way. All right, we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the podcast. Great friends of the show, and Allen Robinson signed jersey. $58.50 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Was, they're hearing Jason disrespecting Allen Robinson. Let me, let me tell you something. Part of the brilliance of Pristine Auction is not only getting a great autograph piece of memorabilia from a favorite player very inexpensively, but it's, it's that when you do that, you have something to brag about. Yes. It's like, I stole this for this price. You have preseason power up. <laughs> I was, yeah, you, I was yeah, doing, yeah. you know, how people talk with their hands. <laughs> I was talking with my hands and I just swiped the I sound think board. I might have played that with my mind. Yeah, I think you did. That's Mike's favorite drop. He was so excited about pristine auction. <laughs> this is a, he was powered up. Didn't your goofy your your you're a goofy movie guy? Oh, how do you oh, not have a fanatic. goofy movie tattoo on your body? Uh, I, I feel like that it's it's at the right it's time. A, look, it's a it's a fair question. I don't know. Maybe if I found the right artist, I could get a power line tattoo. Was the, When's your last? When was your last tattoo? A long time ago, yeah. man. Way too yeah. long. Was it before we started the podcast? No, no, I got sleeved up. Oh, that's right. Like you did. basically when we uh, got our new space. But it was the 25th anniversary of the Goofy movie. It was a sensational week of celebrating 
the uh, the, the the greatest animated picture that Disney has ever produced. <laughs> Had, a, had an not, excellent time with that. You, all, It's almost like you're sponsored by the Goofy movie, which... Yeah, hashtag not a sponsor. ...doesn't but, make any sense, but you look, would. You would take right. it. The Goofy movie's out sponsor, there throwing me. cash out. They're, this is their time. They don't they even need to pay me, man. I'll be the spokesperson for the Goofy movie. You already movie. are. Yeah, yeah. We find out Mike's been paid all these years. <laughs> all right. Uh, just to close out what I was saying before I hit preseason power up for no reason... PristineAuction.com. Use the code BALLERS when you sign up over there and get a $10 credit. Very excited about our announcement for next week. Very excited about the NFL draft and our rookie shows. This is going to be a lot of fun. I mean, this is we finally have the NFL back in the spotlight. Where it needs to be. The, guys, the guys are excited. nodding. excited. Well, yeah. Jason's just footballed up. Yeah, in his whatever high rise. Put all that, put all out. You know what I'm saying? That's what Mama always said. All right, Foot Clan, that's it for us. Thanks for tuning in, for listening. Check out Jason Eats tomorrow on YouTube. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, as you're stocking up on things you need, don't forget food you'll love with Omaha Steaks. Right now, the Omaha Steaks limited time stock up sale is available for the Foot Clan to help your family stock up on the food you love. Go to omahasteaks.com, enter the promo code FOOTBALLERS in the search bar, and you can save more than 50% on your order and get free shipping on orders of $69 or more.